Friends and John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Huram H310A juicer. And of course, I'll be comparing it against the best-selling Nama J2 juicer. The video that really spurred this on for me is because I saw an Instagram post. We'll throw it up right there on the screen. And it says basically the H310A outperforms all other juicers right you know to me as the number one world's juicer expert and i hear it outperforms all others you know like light bulbs go off in my head like maybe even red flags it's like warning 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 like how is this little machine going to outperform all others and i'm like then i thought to myself you know what john you haven't tested it yet maybe it will outperform all others i mean i've tested every major brand juicer in the world, some of the ones that make the highest yield. And my personal opinion is that the H310A is not gonna outperform all others. So, you know, my personal opinion is that, you know, the her marketing team is maybe um, doing some things that I personally would not do just so that they could make their machines sound good and they could sell more machines, right? Marketing is cheap and easy. It just takes words and people read words and they interpret them, right? As the number one world's juicer expert, I don't just repeat the, the dogma. I don't just repeat the marketing of the companies, right? I actually test the machines like you guys are going to see today. The only way you're going to know if a machine is better or worse than another machine is to test it against each other. That's why this channel is dedicated to testing the juicers and other kitchen appliances that allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables and process them in the best ways possible. I encourage you guys to watch my other videos before you make your juicer purchase so you understand what you're getting. My goal is to show you guys the honest truth about how the juicers work so that you can make an educated choice. You know, marketing, there's a lot of marketing fluff and the Huram marketing department, you know, is doing things that I personally would not do and don't agree with but if they're gonna do it that's up to them but what is up to me is to show you guys what they're doing and then share my personal opinions on those specific topics but more importantly i'm gonna put the juicer to the test so some of the juicers that i test in my episodes were given to me by the manufacturers that being said haram did not give me this juicer this juicer was bought the next thing I will say is that I am a retailer and sell all the major brand juicers in the United States and I am not currently representing the Huram company. So this is an independent video. But what I will tell you guys is that some of my favorite juicers are actually made in the Huram factory. The Huram factory makes some of the most best juicers in the entire world including the NAMA J2, which NAMA has her um, make for them in partnership, and then NAMA sells it in the United States. Of course, the Santa 727 from Santa um, is also a collaborative project between Santa and the Huron Factory. Huron Factory makes it for Santa. So I'm, I can't really say anything about the Huron Factory. They do amazing work. They make some of the top best juicer production and have super high quality that being said, the question arises about the engineering of some of the machines that come out on the market, like the Santa 727 is engineered by Santa and Huram, and then the NAMA is engineered by NAMA and Huram, whereas Huram's machines are 100% engineered by them. In previous testing of this screenless style design, which include my videos on the H200, link down below to that, H300, link down below to that, and the H300, in my opinion, is being sold in the United States as the Omega Effortless Batch Juicer. Link down below to that. All these juicers that have the screenless design have their own sets of pros and cons. This is a screenless design, although it's a miniature version. So actually, first, what I want to get into is actually, I want to get into some of the marketing that Huram USA is doing for the H310. And I'm just showing you guys what I found online. As you guys can see, we're on the Huram website. And as you guys can see, H310 Easy Clean Slow Juicer selling for $349. It did originally sell for $379, so they reduced the price by about $30. Bucks. And it only has 57 reviews despite being sold for some period of time. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down on this page to so the specifications. And you guys can see clearly on the product details on the web page for the Easy Clean Chamber H310. It says standard usage up to 30 minutes continuously. You know, I believe this is a little bit sketchy personally, 
uh, because according to the globalharam.com website, all right, so this is our globalharam.com website, and if we go down to the bottom of the H310A page on the Global Haram website, you guys could clearly see that under product specifications H310A, it says the rated usage time is 15 minutes. So, you know, the instruction book that comes with the H310A also says the usage time is 15 minutes. So, you know, the 30 minute usage time on the Haram USA website to me is maybe could be potentially misleading people I will say that furthermore on the Amazon website the listing for the H310A personal self-feeding slow juicer HP pink shows a totally different juicer right that's because in my opinion what somebody did was for this for the Huram H310 they basically reused an old listing for the HP juicer model which is this model which actually I had the number one review for for many years and then they actually added as a subcategory the H310A model into that when you do that you gain all the existing reviews of the old model so when people look at the reviews oh there's 446 reviews People will relate that to that there's 406, 46 reviews on the H310A, whereas actually most of those reviews are for the HP model, the pink model, or the other colors they have that is no longer available. So this is called the listing takeover. So why I think this is a little bit shady is because basically if you go down to the bottom and read the reviews, especially if you just go down to like you know the top reviews I have the top review here and I said this review is for the HP model not the H310 just trying to let people know about this and then my review got deleted it's no longer on here but so if you look now you can see color H310A so this does apply to the H310 but then if you go down further it just says verified purchase and it's from years ago this is actually, this review is from the HP model. Same with this model, just as verified purchase from the HP model. So most of these reviews are from the HP model, not the H310 model, unless it specifically states H310A. So, you know, companies do this all the time, you know, and reuse an old listing for a new product just by putting a little variant so they could capture the old reviews, which I believe personally is misleading. And let's see what Amazon says about this. So if we go to the Amazon uh, sellercentral.amazon.com, you can see policies for editing detail pages. So that page was originally an HP3 page with the white model, the pink model, maybe some other colors, and they basically updated it to add the new model. And Amazon says, you must not use an existing listing for a new version of a product. This includes changes in color, size, material, features, and product name. Obviously, the HP3 is not the H310A. Instead, create a new product detail page for each new version. For example, the manufacturer updates its streaming media player by adding a new remote control with four buttons instead of two. This product is materially different from the older version and it must be listed as a new ASIN. So clearly, I'm not sure what's going on with Haram USA, but they did not abide by Amazon policies. That being said, Amazon is allowing the listing to stay up there for whatever reason um, it is. So yeah, that's all I want to mention. Just some of the shady things about the H310A. So, you know, these are some of the things that I think are a little bit, you know, that I, I personally wouldn't do myself um, to advertise a juicer. I just basically take out the juicers and show them to you guys truthfully. I don't need to say this is better than that or anything like that. I'm going to prove it to you guys in the videos. I'm the only guy in the world that really takes juicing to this level. And what I want to do is I want to ask you guys a favor, man. If you guys appreciate my videos and I've saved you from buying the wrong juicer, I've helped you to find the right juicer for you, I would ask you guys to help me out too. 
and I all you need to do is use that little coupon code I'll put down below this video and also use my link down below the video when you use that link and the coupon code right the company will share with me a small commission so I can continue to make these educational videos and be truthful and spread the truth about juicers. And in the end, you guys will win too because you guys will also get a discount. You'll get a 10% discount, as a matter of fact, on the, on the item I'll be talking about in a little bit. And you'll help me out, you'll get a discount, and we all win. And then we are rewarding companies that are actually making juicers that perform really well versus juicers that, that, that say a lot of noise, you know, that say things that may not be true to do things that I personally wouldn't do myself, right? We want to reward good behavior, not bad behavior. Anyways, enough about talking about what the marketing team at Huram in the U.S. is doing. Next, let's go ahead and get into this machine itself. This is the H310A. And as you guys can see, this is the box it comes in. The interesting thing about this box is that it has a little warning here. And I'm like, whoa, there's a warning on there. And it says, this product contains chemicals including defilate, which is a known to the state of California to cause cancer and reproductive harm. For more information, go to p65warnings.ca.gov. Wow. So, man, I hope you guys are juicing for your health. And meanwhile, the Huram juicer has... Uh, Prop 65 warning it contains some kind of chemical in there that has been shown by the state of California to cause cancer So for me, this is definitely a red flag, you know some of the other juicers in the market You know don't have any kind of prop 65 warning Including the Nama J2 that I'll be showing you guys in a little bit So now that we got that out of the way the next thing I want to do is actually we're gonna go ahead and bring in a Nama J2 juicer so we can compare the Nama J2 against the Huram 310A so you guys could truly see the differences between them also see you know what is included with the machine I'm gonna go over each machine part by part and show the guys the exact differences and also similarities between the machines and then of course at the end I'll be juicing the exact identical amount of produce in each machine to show with you guys how long it takes and how much juice is made and how much pulp is put into the juice all right so now we have the two juicers side by side so you guys can see the difference as you guys can see the nama j2 i would consider a full-size juicer and the Huram h310a after we have a reference point you can see is significantly smaller than the nama j2 and I mean, the, that's one of the main differences, the size. The other difference is that this machine does not have a traditional stainless steel juicing screen and is advertised as easier to clean. In some ways, the Huram H310 is absolutely easier to clean than the Nama J2. In other ways, not so much. I think the main thing for me personally that I have against the Huram H310A is its size. My personal opinion is that the J2 Hopper could even be bigger, <laughs> personally, but actually this has a volume of about 70 ounces, whereas the volume of this hopper is less than half as much. It's like 30 ounces, right? How this will affect you is how much produce you can fill in the hopper in one shot and how much the juicer could make in one hopper full of produce, right? I've tested this and in the Nama J2, I could make about 24 to 32 ounces of juice by filling up the hopper once. 24 in the case of something like celery and carrots. And if I'm juicing something like watermelon, it'll be closer to 32 ounces. Meanwhile, because the hopper is so small on the Huram H310A, you could only make anywhere from maybe 10 to 12 ounces of juice. So, I mean, if you guys are only drinking 10 or 12 ounces of juice, just kind of as a supplement to your diet, you're not doing it for any necessarily healing purposes, this machine might be great. Also, this machine might be great if you want to travel because this machine's a lot larger. And the other caveat is if you only want to drink a little bit of juice at a time. Meanwhile, the Nama J2 is, you know, more of a family juicer, good for the whole family because you could juice a lot more, a lot more quickly challenge with this small hopper is that you're gonna have to continually refeed it so basically it kind of defeats the hopper in my opinion because now you still have to basically fill this hopper close it let it run wait for it fill it close it wait for it i mean 
with the Nama J2, you could fill the hopper and you could walk away because literally the machine will be running for, you know, depending on what you put in there, two to five minutes, and then you come back and load it up again. But meanwhile, you've created a good volume of juice, 24 to 32 ounces, whereas this is 10 to 12 ounces. And let me show you guys the main difference between the hoppers. Okay, we got some apples here. These are just standard organic Fuji apples I bought actually this morning. And, you know, it, it, let's do the J2 first. And the J2, we could fit one, two, three, four, five, six apples. So let's do that. We're just going to put the apples in there. One. And you, you don't have to pre-cut apples to juice them in the J2. I do recommend pre-cutting. So you'll be able to better, to better, better efficiently um, load up the uh, hopper here. But it's not necessary. So you guys can see we basically fit in six apples and can easily shut the lid. Six apples, all right? Now let's open up the Huram, which is a little more difficult to open. We can load up one apple in there. And now let's put a second apple. Second apple in there. We can't even shut the lid on two apples, right? So we can take out one apple, put in that apple, and we fit one apple versus six apples. That's truly the difference. So the juice of one apple coming out or the juice of six apples coming out how much juice do you want to make? Do you want to make one apple's worth of juice or six apple's worth of juice in one shot? Furthermore, the Nama has actually a, a hole in the feed chute, so you can actually fill, fill it up as it's going, whereas the H310, there's no hole in the top. So actually, to load it up again, you need to actually un, undo this clip, which is a little bit difficult, and then you know put in the next apple once the first apple is done processing. So yeah, that's that's the insanity of the machine. I mean, of course, for some of you guys, this may be a benefit because you don't need something that big. You may have a smaller kitchen. You may not want to drink a lot of juice. But what I'm gonna tell you guys is this: if you guys are juicing for therapeutic reasons to get some to, to meet your health goals, your weight loss goals, or whatever else, you know, to me, the Herm H310 is just not sufficient enough to produce the quantity of juice needed to make you know measurable changes in our body. It'll produce a little bit of juice, and hey, that's great if you want to make a little juice every day and drink it just for just because you enjoy juice. But if you're here for your health, I'd encourage you guys to you know get the right machine the first time around, which in my opinion is the Nama J2. And I mean, I'm gonna tell you guys straight up that the Nama J2 is my favorite juicer. Link down below to the, vi the video on why the Nama J2 is my favorite juicer. There's 10 reasons why it is still my favorite juicer at this time, at the time of this video filming. Of course, that is subject to change based on new juicers I test, so you always wanna make sure you click that subscribe button right down below and make sure you click the little bell to get notified as new videos come out. As new juicers come out, I'll be testing them, and if my favorite changes, I'll be making a new favorite favorite juicer video for you guys. So now I wanna show you guys the accessories that are included with both machines. I find it curious that the Huram H310 includes a standard instruction manual, recipe book, quick start guide kind of thing, and also a cleaning brush, and also one catch cup, actually. The catch cup, they only provide for the juice catch cup, which is measured up to 600 milliliters, and they don't provide you a pulp catch cup. This is one of the first juicers I've, I'm aware about that does not include a, something to catch your pulp in. You know, so, I, I mean, I don't know why they did that, personally. <laughs> Meanwhile, over on the Nama J2, you get a full-size pulp catch container, full-size juice catch container that is actually measured up to 1,000 milliliters, as well as a little top here to put on to store your juice for later if you decide to do that. In addition, you also get that recipe book. You also get the instruction manual as well as a quick start guide, as well as a cleaning brush. That's all kind of similar to the Huram. But in addition, you also get an included coarse hole screen, which Nama will call the smoothie screen, so you can make smoothies in the juicer. Meanwhile, due to this all-in-one design, Huram will say that you, could that you could make smoothies, you could make sorbets, and you could make juice in this as it is set up. I have not tried any of those features as of yet. That being said, on the Nama J2, the most requested part for the Nama J2 is a sorbet screen for the Nama J2. At present time, at the time of the filming, this is not yet available, but I have a good news, is that I have a prototype of that screen, and this screen should be out next month in July sometime, 2023, as an optional accessory, so you'll be able to make the sorbets 
like frozen banana sorbet or ice cream using 100% bananas in the NAMA J2 as an optional purchase. As soon as this is available, I will have a video on it reviewing it for you guys and show you guys how to use it. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about the warranties on both machines as well as the companies that service the warranty. The Huram H310A has a two-year warranty on all the juicer parts and it has a 10-year warranty on the motor base itself. Meanwhile, over on the NEMA J2, the NEMA J2 has a 15-year motor warranty and a 15-year warranty on the parts. This means for the next 15 years, if something happens to your NEMA J2 due to no fault of your own, it will be covered under warranty and NEMA will take care of you. That being said, I've gotten a lot of feedback from NEMA as well as me using their customer service directly. Actually, I, I, I contacted them last Saturday, actually. Last Saturday, I contacted them with an email, um, via email, and actually within an hour, I got a response and my situation that I had was solved. Meanwhile, I haven't had any experience with the Huram customer service, although if you look in some of the reviews out there, you know, basically the Huram customer service in the U.S. is not the greatest. That's all I could really say about that. So with that, let's go ahead and start comparing each of these machines part by part. So you guys could better understand how they work, how they're similar, and more importantly, how they're different. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off these top sets on both machines and sit them down. I like that the Nema J2 has a nice handle, so it's easy to pick up and move. Also, when you put it on here, it's nice and stable. Meanwhile, on the Huron, there's no handle and it's a bit difficult to kind of pick up. You don't know where to pick it up. And actually, it could kind of tip over a little bit easy because, um, you know, it's not really stable. There's three sides to it that has really good stability, but then the, the fourth side has just a little pin that kind of holds it down. So actually earlier it was sitting there and I just knocked it and it just fell over, all right? So yeah, I'm gonna have to say the NAMA J2 is a much more durable and better built part. So let's see next, let's see the lid here. So the lid on the NAMA J2 is like a trigger lid. So you go here and you just press it. So you press with your finger in and the lid pops up. So meanwhile, on the Huram, you actually have to just take this little tab and push it out and pull it up at the same time, and the lid will open. For easier cleaning, the lid on the NAMA J2 is actually removable, so I, I remove it every time when I'm done to clean it out. In addition, this lid has basically a little built-in funnel that funnels the produce in. Should you just put it here like a cherry tomato, it'll roll into the little funnel there like a little volcano. And it has a little hole here so you could feed this as it is running. Meanwhile, over on the Huram, there is no hole on the top. I do like that the lid is clear so you could actually see through it. But I don't like that this lid is actually non-removable. You can't take it off the clean, so that's going to make cleaning a tad bit more difficult. Uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and show you guys the hoppers. You guys can see the hopper here. And there's a, basically a processing blade that pre-cuts the produce to some extent before it feeds it in the machine. It also... Uh, regulates the rate that the produce is fed into the machine. Likewise, on the Huram H310, they also have a processing blade that seems to take up a lot more space in the bottom than the NAMA. So let's go ahead and take off both these hoppers so you guys can see the differences. Wow, there's a substantial weight difference in the hopper. This hopper is made of basically several different parts and two different kinds of uh, plastic or a black plastic here. And it's more clear, whereas actually this is just a molded plastic that's one piece. It's all this like, uh, you know, kind of translucent gray material. They both have kind of ribbing on the side, so maybe that's helped to push things in the machine. I kind of like the shape of the H310 hopper a little better. It's just clean all the way around with a little protrusion right here for where you open and close it. Whereas on the NAMA hopper, it's all round, except for this little protrusion where there's some of the safety switch apparatus. So say you're juicing like a lot of leafy greens, right? You can take a handful of leafy greens and shove them in this hopper easily. But with this hopper, you have a smaller little area to get it in. And you, of course, you cannot fill as much because this only has a 30 ounce capacity. Whereas the J2 hopper has a 70 ounce capacity. It's going to hold a lot more material, twice as much material as the H310. Uh, moving down to the processing blade here. I mean the processing blade they look to be about out of the same material. The H310 uh, processing blade is much more aggressive and the, the hole in the bottom of the 
um, hopper is a bit smaller compared to the Nama J2, which may, you know, regulate the amount of produce that goes in the machine, maybe slows it down a tad bit, in my opinion. Not exactly sure on that. That being said, I do like the bottom of the H310. It's just really clean. They have this little rubber or a silicone gasket all the way around, which kind of keeps a, you know, watertight seal, which I really like. And it's just really easy underneath here to clean. The Nama J2 also has a seal, but it's on the outside. So this is less likely to come off, whereas this seal may come out because it looks like just a, a set in kind of like O-ring thing. Um, and on this machine, there's a little bit more nooks and crannies, a few more on the bottom of the hopper here. But yeah, otherwise, uh, they're pretty much the same. Um, but, you know, I really love the handle on the J2. And of course, I love that detachable lid. So let's move these aside. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the juicing mechanisms and the bowls. Um, I mean, the main difference between these machines is that the Huram H310A has in some ways simplified the juicing process because now you have basically a two-piece auger. This is uh, the top part, and then this is the bottom part, so you have two pieces on here. And then you simply have the juicing bowl that has basically these little ribs inside there that basically will, will act as the grinder. So the, the auger next to the ribs and the produce getting shoved between the ribs and the auger is how it juices. That means there may be things stuck in the ridges and the edges of the ribs down here. In addition, they've colored this already for you. It's kind of like a yellowish tinge. I can only say that's because maybe if you juice a lot of oranges, oranges will kind of get ground in or turmeric will get ground in. And then the plastic will just kind of turn orange anyway. So this way maybe you can't see the staining. I'm not exactly sure why they did that. In addition, at the bottom of this bowl, there's a few different channels. There's an outer channel in here, which is basically where the pulp comes out, this uh, pulp uh, you know, exit. And then there's an inner channel where the juice flows out the juice spout cap. And the center hole is basically where the motor shaft comes up into the machine. Um, all I could say is that the outer channel is quite narrow. You're gonna have to use a special um, you know, brush or toothbrush that comes with the machine to kind of get in there to clean it and or do a pressurized spray. And for me, the, the biggest challenge of this machine is cleaning the outer chamber walls where they have the little nubs that basically do the produce grinding. Like to get in there with the included brush is gonna be extremely difficult to clean that properly each and every time in my personal opinion. Of course, some people may just rinse it out and then call it a day. But if you do that, there may be, you know, mineral deposits and carotenoid stains. And, you know, in the case of like turmeric that's kind of waxy, you're going to get some turmeric wax in there and you're going to get some buildup that over time may affect the performance of the juicer. And definitely you won't be able to keep it as clean in my personal opinion. The juice valve cap here, basically you could shut to, uh, you know, let juice collect in the container, which I do not recommend because this, this little bowl here is so small, it'll start to actually overflow and be not a good thing. So you always need to leave this open when juicing. Um, on the pulp outlet here. I like the design on this. Actually, they have a little flip up design that basically drops the whole hatch down so you can get in here and clean it. The biggest challenge I see with this model is that this little port here where all the pulp has to get shoved through is actually quite small. And in some situations of stringy things like celery or cucumbers or maybe ginger, it may end up clogging. Um, in addition, they have a silicone flap here that keeps some back pressure on that hole to keep the pulp in there to get it wrung out drier. Um, let's see, this thing is does come out, but it actually is stuck in there. So this makes cleaning a little bit more difficult, but the pro is that you will never lose this machine because it, this part, because it is attached on there. So let's go ahead and put that in place and lock this down. Let's go ahead and take a look at the auger here. So this auger is rather light. The challenge I have with this auger, um, while it is easier to clean, there are once again more ribbing on the auger where things can stain. In addition, these have these little tines here, and I could press these little tines, and they kind of flex a little bit. So should you drop this on the ground and it hits one of the tines at the wrong edge on a, you know, I don't know, a cement or a tile floor, I don't know, this may break. In addition, this other piece has lots of nooks and crannies to clean. You gotta get in there with a brush, I'd clean it in the inside and out, I'd scrub every different surface 
to make sure you're not getting mineral buildup or carotenoid stains um, to clean. In addition, actually, they've been strengthening this piece from the first one, so this is actually a little more stable and solid than their previous generation, which actually I give them props for. Um, but yeah, just there's a lot of surface area in here to clean off up and down between each one if you are, you know, um, a little bit more concerned about cleaning all the different parts and brushing it down, which I am. Of course, a lot of you guys may just rinse it in half, you know, not really, you know, rinse it too well and just rinse it and call it a day and just be done. And, you know, that's totally your choice as well. Meanwhile, let's check out the NAMA J2. The NAMA J2 has a more traditional juicing system. They have basically a one piece auger, which is actually nice and heavy. You guys could see, despite having all these little grooves in it, you can see I have some mineral deposits that I didn't even clean off my unit here. They also have divots in the auger, which is said to keep the machine a little bit quieter. This is a lot more heavy duty auger, heavier. And if you should drop it, it's probably gonna bounce because I have dropped it a few times. Next, you have a traditional stainless steel juicing screen with the holes as well as a wiping blade part and the standard juicing bowl. So let's go ahead and count the parts here. One, two, three parts on the Haram H310A to clean. And on the Nama J2, one, two, three, four parts. John, there's more parts. It's going to be harder. <laughs> in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. And yes, there is absolutely one more part. So the auger is always pretty much easy to clean. I put a soap on a little brush and I brush it off. I spray water in here, it just sprays clean, right? Same thing with this. I put uh, soap on a brush, I, br I brush down the silicone wipers inside and out, spray it down, we're pretty much done. Same thing with the juicing bowl. This juicing bowl is gonna be significantly easier to clean than this juicing bowl. The, the reason for that is because this juicing bowl is where all the juicing is happening inside there and all the pulp is getting clogged in there and stuck in there and you've got to basically reach it only from the top and there's gonna be things you know jammed in there when you're done the juicing is not happening in this juicing bowl the only purpose of the juicing bowl here is to basically direct the pulp out and direct the juice out the bottom of this juicing bowl is really simple it's basically just flat on the bottom there's no nooks and crannies you could spray water in there take a brush and brush it out really easy of course this um, where the pulp comes out, you could also just drop this down just like that. It drops down really easily. I will want you to note the opening on here. The opening is nice and large, right? This is the reason why the NAMA J2, unlike other vertical juicers, tends to only rarely jam. I think I've only ever jammed this once when I was juicing something I shouldn't be. But when I've used it, I've, it never has clogged up and jammed and backed up on me. And one of the reasons is this large port. Now, of course, they also have the silicone flap which is 100% removable, so this makes it a lot easier to clean. That being said, the downside to the removable flap is that don't let this go down your garbage disposal or don't lose it. I haven't lost one yet, but I don't know how you guys are gonna be. But I do like that it's removable and a lot, I say, easier to clean than one that's just stuck in there that you can't pull out all the way to clean underneath it. Lock that back in place. Meanwhile, over on the, this also has a juice a spout here that you can close and you can actually collect juice in the bowl up to, I think, about um, 450 milliliters before you open it and let it out. This is done to let the juice mix in the bowl. I personally do not recommend doing this. Every other influencer online showing the J2 leaves it closed and then lets it all out because it looks cool in the video shot. That being said, when your juice is spinning around in there, your juicer is trying to extract juice, but at the same time, it's swimming in juice. So, you know, based on my testing, you're going to get a little bit less yield and your pulp is going to be a little bit more wet. That's why I say leave your spout cap always open when juicing. So, yeah. Oh, and then most important part of the Nama J2 is the juicing screen itself. The juicing screen and between the auger and the juicing screen, this is where all the juicing happens in the J2, whereas the juicing happens between the auger and the outside of the bowl in the Huram. And, uh, you know, usually the screen is pretty much clean, so usually you got ground in, a little bit of ground in pulp inside the juicing screen. But this, to me, is a lot more easy to clean than this. But you're saying, John, this has holes in it. Well, the thing is, on this machine, the holes really never get clogged up. What I do is I blast water through the inside and I blast water on the outside. I take the brush and I scrub out the screen from the outside as well as the inside, which you can access from the top, also from the bottom. Whereas this, you can't access it from the bottom. 
you got to access it from the top and it goes really deep and there's some nice crevices in there whereas this is a lot easier to clean in my personal opinion but also it depends you know if you're just doing a rinse then this unit is going to be better if you're not so you know i will say conscious about cleaning and conscientious about cleaning but if you want to do a good thorough cleaning job my opinion is that the NAMA J2 is a lot easier to do a thorough cleaning job and get in and reach all the hard to reach areas which are actually there there are hardly any <laughs> where there is a lot more hard to reach areas on the Huron. So last we want to talk about the motors on both machines over on the Huron. I think the whole unit uh, assembled is about 7.9 pounds so almost 8 pounds. Meanwhile the NAMA J2 fully assembled is about uh, 12 pounds or so. So it's significantly heavier, which means it also has a more beefy motor, which is really important. So, you know, some of the specs online say the Huron H310A has a 150 watt motor. Meanwhile, when I turn it upside down right here, it says it's 100 watts printed on the bottom of the unit, which is actually quite interesting. Uh, meanwhile, the NEMA J2 on the bottom of the unit, it says it is 200 watts. So that's literally 100 watts more of uh, power it consumes. And so I would also then surmise that this machine has more torque um, than this machine. That means it has more torque and basically could crush open thick carrots without stopping. You know, the NEMA J2 rarely ever stops. I mean, when I'm juicing normal produce items. I mean, well, actually, I haven't used the Huron H310A yet, but I could only imagine with a 100-watt motor. I mean, I think they put stronger motors in RC cars, for example. Now, the other thing that I did mention earlier is that this has a 15-minute duty cycle. So they don't want you to juice for long bouts of juice. They want you to juice for no more than 30 minutes. Otherwise, the machine may overheat. You may cause irreprehensible damage to the machine um, more than 15 minutes. And so this is really clearly designed for small volumes. If you're a single person in an apartment in New York City, you know, then and you don't want to drink a lot of juice, this might be for you. But if you have a large family, you know, I wouldn't personally waste my time on this small, more juicer that's a toy. Meanwhile, over on the NAMA J2, it has a full 30-minute uh, duty cycle. But even NAMA doesn't say you, you have to turn it off after 30 minutes. And as a matter of fact... You know, I've used this machine when I actually get it out and use it, which is quite regularly because it's what I use 90% of the time in my kitchen. Just yesterday, I, I had a juicing session of about an hour because I made eight quarts of juice in the NAMA J2, right? It's never failed me. So, I mean, I, I don't know that I'd go much over an hour because you definitely want to let the machine rest. This is a home machine, not for commercial purposes. But generally, when I get out the NAMA J2, I juice a gallon or two at a time and it's never shut off during the juicing process for me. It is a quite stout and durable machine that has proven itself to me time after time. All right, so yeah, we learned a little bit. Oh, and then the other thing is both machines have a, a, a cord, uh, you know, that is disconnectable that you could disconnect. So actually I really like that, that the Huron now has that same style cord. Um, I don't like that the machine actually has a 100 watt motor and only a 15 minute run time and of course the small hopper is the deal breaker for me all right so let's go ahead and reassemble each machine so to assemble the Huron I mean it is easier to assemble for sure you're going to take the bottom part of the auger the top part of auger slide them together and lock them in place you're going to just go ahead and drop that down in there you're going to take the uh, hopper and then there's a little uh, outcropping here you're going to line up the outcropping here uh, lock it in place and you're just going to take this whole top set lock it in the machine and uh, when you have the lid closed you could then turn the machine on and it'll turn on and run meanwhile over on the NAMA J2 you need to assemble this off the machine don't try to assemble it on the machine it won't work you're going to take the uh, wiping blade and put that in the juicing screen then there's two little tabs a small tab and a large tab you're going to find the corresponding tab small tab and large tab and drop that in um, to the main uh, bowl here. The screen just seats into place. You then take the auger, drop the auger in, make sure you spin it as you put it in there, locks into place, then take the top set. You're gonna line up this outcropping here with the outcropping here, put it in place, lock it into place so that this makes uh, outcropping all the way down, right? 
if you set it up improperly and you, you set it up like this with the handle here over the outcropping, this machine will not turn on. So make sure you do that correctly. This is one of the biggest challenges I see with people that get their Nama J2. They're so excited, Juice. John, I got the machine, the machine's defective. And then they get really upset. And it's like, then I show them my video. Okay, make sure you assemble it correctly. And then, then they email me back, oh, John, it works. <laughs> so, and then you also got to make sure the lid's on properly. If the lid is not properly shut, the machine will not turn on. Then you set this whole um, top set on top of the machine. And then you can actually turn this machine on as well. So there you have it. Those are both machines. What did you think so far, guys? Leave your comments down below this video. Next up, we're going to go ahead and get the produce weighed in and juice even amounts of produce in both machines to see how they perform. All right, let's go ahead and do a weigh-in over on the NAMA J2 side. Got our produce there. It looks like we got 21.44 grams of produce. And if we go over to the Haram side, looks like we also got 21.44 grams of produce. So we get both cameras on. There we go. Both scales in the shot, 21.44 on both scales. Looks like we got a fair fight. All right, so first I'll be juicing in the Nama J2 juicer today. And we're going to time that for you guys so you guys can see how long it takes to juice in the Nama J2. The recipe today is mint. A uh, fresh pick from my garden, a one inch piece of ginger, organic carrots. We got some peeled jicama into cubes. And the majority of the juice is basically the cantaloupe. And actually, I've left the seeds in there. I basically cut a, one cantaloupe. I skinned it. I cut it in half. One half went to that side. One half went to this side. So we got even consistencies of the produce. Same thing with the carrots. I cut the carrot in half. Half of it went here. Half of it went there. Uh, likewise, and same thing with the jicama. So we got the exact same, you know, kinds of produce from the same produce item, just half there, half here. And I guess with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and hit start there. And we're just going to go ahead and load the J2 up. I always like to put all the mint in first, and then follow that with some of the uh, cantaloupe pieces here. We're going to load up a little bit of that, and then we're going to put a few pieces of carrots in there. That'll kind of help agitate it. We're going to go ahead and then put um, some of the jicama in there and then just maybe grab a bunch of these. As you guys can see, it's really easy to load up the J2 hopper because it is so big. I think pretty much in this batch, we've already almost like used half of our produce easily. We're going to put, throw a few more carrots right up on the top, shove that down and clamp the lid down and turn it on. And we're just going to go ahead and let this go to town. This is the amazing thing about the NAMA J2. I could literally uh, get up and walk away and have this machine run without me. That is really the game-changing technology. Other machines, you got to sit there and push each produce item into the juicer so it demands your time so, to make your own juice, whereas the NAMA J2 is like your automatic attendant to make the juice for you while you're doing other more important things in life. So the J2 is pretty much empty the hopper. We're just going to go ahead and load up the rest of this. I like to put in the ginger in first there. And we're just going to go ahead and take scoopfuls of the mixture and drop it right in to the machine. I think we'll be able to fit it all in literally uh, two loadings of the hopper of the Nama J2. All right, let's go ahead and dump the last little bit into the hopper of the Nama J2. Seeds and all, guys. This is going to save you guys time. Just run the seeds through there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and start this back up and we're off juicing. Meanwhile, because the machine's running, I can go ahead and do my dishes and clean up while the machine's running because now I have free time. We're just gonna go ahead and let the machine do its thing and we're gonna go ahead and speed this part of the video up for you guys to save you guys some time. Alright, so you guys can see the hopper on the J2 is empty and I always like to let it run a little bit longer after the hopper empties. Um, you'll know when you're done, when the, the pulp stops flowing out of the machine and the juice stops dripping. One of the tips I want to give you guys is you could stop the machine and then just back it up for I don't know, about 10 seconds and then turn it back on forward and sometimes it catches some additional produce that actually is stuck in the machine that didn't 
go through all the way. So with that, let's go ahead and turn it off. And we're going to go ahead and hit stop there. So you guys can see it took nearly six minutes to juice all that in the Nama J2. We made almost, looks like 1,500 milliliters of juice. It worked pretty much uneventfully. The pulp didn't get clogged up. The pulp kept coming out. And we have some juice to drink, which is amazing. So next, let's go ahead and do the same exact amount of produce in the Hurum H310A. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna hit start. We're gonna have to open up this little lid thing here and now we're gonna have to load in this hopper. I put all the mint in first in the J2 and I guess we're just gonna go ahead and try to like put a bunch of this stuff in, the little feed chute there. Now the opening on this, this hopper here is about 4.1 inches. On the NAMA it's like a little bit over five inches. So it's a bit easier to feed in the produce. And as you guys can see, I basically hardly fit in nothing. <laughs> into the Huram because it is only 30 ounces versus 70 ounces. So I, I, I think we're gonna have to probably fill it like four times. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Now I will say that the Huram H310 is more quiet than the Nama J2 by far, but uh, let's find out how long it takes to juice. So the hopper is just about empty on the Huram H310A and it looks like we're almost basically at three minutes already. So let's go ahead and load it up again. So literally it is already taken like half as much time as a Nama J2, which would have been done <laughs> like halfway already. And this on this machine, we're only filling up the hopper for the second time. So the way this operates, in my opinion, is that it operates a lot slower just due to the method. It has to crush the, the produce in between the the edges of the bowl and the auger just not quite as quickly as the Nama J2 with more of a you know traditional design. So let's go ahead and close that up. Oh, it's starting up slow and it couldn't make it, so we're gonna have to reverse it and get it going again. And we're just gonna go ahead and keep on juicing. So we'll speed this up for you guys to save you guys more time. I think what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna load this up in fast forward mode as it goes and we can just see how much more time it takes. So far, this is gonna be uh, significantly slower, in my opinion. All right, so as you guys can see, the Huram is finally finishing up. It's just emptied the hopper, and I'm waiting for the pulp to stop flowing out, and the juice to stop dripping out as well. And we are here at, wow, 14 and a half minutes and it's still not yet done so we're just going to go ahead and let it run a little bit longer until it completely stops and we've extracted all the juice out of the produce all right so the machine has pretty much stopped sending out pulp so once again we're going to go ahead and stop it we're going to go ahead and hit reverse and then we're going to go ahead and hit forward let's see if we get any last bits of uh, juice out and it looks like we're not really successful turn it off and we're going to go ahead and hit the stop button so you guys can see it took 15 minutes compared to six minutes so wow guys that's like oh that's like basically it's like two and a half times longer when using the Huram h310a and we're up to the 15 minute run time so you really wouldn't want to use it any more than that and the motor is getting a little bit warm there and uh, we've created probably maybe 1,400 milliliters of juice. So on both machines, I always like to tip it up and see if we get any last drips out of the machine. Before I close the spout cap, we'll do the same thing on the Huram. All right, close the spout cap. Next, let's go ahead and put these juices up front in the center for you guys to show you guys the differences in yield. All right, so the first thing I want to do is we're going to go ahead and shake down the little sieves here. Um, I've shaken down the Nama sieve, which is pretty easy. The Huram sieve is a bit more difficult because there's a lot more pulp in the sieve, guys. Like a lot more. So let's go ahead and shake this down. I'll come back at you when I got all the, all the juice um, through. So I've gotten all the juice out of the pulp, out of the sieve. And now I want to go ahead and compare these for you guys. Look at the amount of pulp in the... Huram. Generally, the screenless design will definitely put more pulp in the juice. In most cases, 
based on my testing and this this is no exception I don't know if you guys can see that, but basically it looks like to me it's like two and a half times more pulp. How will we know for sure? We're going to get out our scale here and we're going to weigh the amount of pulp created by each machine. All right, first up we got the Nama J2 pulp. We have a total of 23 grams of pulp put into the juice by the Nama J2. Meanwhile, over on the Huram, Let's go ahead and weigh this out. 23 grams versus, wow, 62 grams of pulp, guys. So basically over twice as much pulp, and it took over twice as much time to basically make the, the, the juice. So actually with that, let's go ahead and check out to see how much juice each juicer made. Let's go ahead and give you guys a close-up on the yield. So this was actually quite interesting. Looks like the Huram H310 actually beat Yes, it beat the Nama J2. You can see where the red line is. And that's basically about uh, 1,500 milliliters. And it looks like it's sitting pretty much right on the line for the Huram H310A. And if we go over the Nama J2, look at that. The line is right there, and the juice level is a little bit below it. So maybe I don't even know, man, like a cup less juice or something like that. And like if we go right over, it made a tad bit more because it's actually up to the line. So interesting. Despite taking two and a half times longer, it actually did make a little bit more juice. All right, that was an upset. I was figuring the Nama's going to beat the Huram. Maybe not by much, or maybe they're going to tie. But wow, the Huram actually made like that much more juice. Not a lot of juice, guys. And here's the situation. I mean, these are some of the latest model juicers out in the market. They are some of the most efficient vertical auger single, uh, you know, gear juicers on the market. And they're, in my opinion, fairly evenly matched. In this case, the Huram actually made a little bit more. In some cases, the Nama will make a little bit more. In some cases, they're going to exactly tie. So that's really cool that Huram is up in its game. That being said, there's some other challenges I had with it aside from the yield, like it took two and a half times longer. I want to go ahead and stir this juice up uh, to see what it's going to taste like. I am feeling when I'm stirring it some particulate in the bottom that is likely the jicama particles or the ginger that always sinks to the bottom. And once again, we're going to go ahead and stir the Nama J2 juice up as well. Also feeling the particulate at the bottom. I want to get a fair and even kind of taste test for you guys today. All right, so first we're gonna go ahead and try the Nama J2 juice for you guys. To your health. <laughs> wow. This is one amazing recipe, guys. So this is based on a Jay Cordich recipe, the juice man, of half carrots, half cantaloupe. I personally added in additional jicama and the mint and a little bit of ginger. This juice tastes delicious out of the Nama J2. It's so good, not an overly sweet juice. These cantaloupes were a little bit underripe. For the best results when juicing fruits, you wanna select them hard. If you get a nice soft cantaloupe, hey, do yourselves a favor and eat it fresh. If you guys get a little bit ones that are unmature, unripe, and they don't taste sweet enough for you, that's when I like to juice them to kind of like bring the sweetness out and I'm able to combine it with some vegetables to get more vegetables in me because the goal for me and juicing is to drink more vegetables. I'm glad to eat fruit or blend fruits up into smoothies, but most people don't eat enough vegetables and that's where the juicer could really help you guys out. All right, next, we're going to try the Huram. H310A juice to see how this one tastes to your health. I personally cannot discern a taste difference. They taste so close to me. I wish my ex was still alive. Uh, she's a super taster. She'd be able to totally exactly pinpoint this. But for all practical purposes, these juices basically taste exactly the same. I think the last thing I want to do for you guys is I want to go ahead and dive into the pulp. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dump out the pulps that was created by each machine to take a look at it. And uh, see how well the produce was broken down by each juicer. So you guys can see um, both of the pulps. And honestly, I'm going to have to tell you guys, I mean, they look so similar. So similar. What I might say is that the Huram H310A maybe maybe broke it down a little bit better um, than the Nama J2, honestly. If we pick this up, of course, we could squeeze it, and we're definitely squeezing juice out of the pulp as well. And on the Nama J2 pulp, we could, of course, squeeze the pulp out as well. I believe in this test, uh, the Nama J2 pulp is a little bit more wet. I mean, as evidenced by actually the Huram had more juice, <laughs> so the pulp is a bit more wet on the Nama J2 by a tad, not by much. And the Huram actually did a little bit better job in grinding from just, you know, from visually looking at it, from my opinion. All right, so now I wanna sum this video up for you guys. And you know, there's a lot of things to weigh. Each machine has its own sets of pros and cons. You know, if the yield is the most important thing and you don't care about your time or the warranty length or anything like that, right? and like having to babysit the juicer more, then you'd actually want to get the Huram H310A. It did make a tad bit more yield, pretty much a similar juice quality, but took two and a half times longer to work, and it also put approximately two and a half times more pulp in the juice. So if you guys don't mind drinking a you know pulpy juice that's more like a smoothie, then of course the Huram H310A could be for you. That being said, I'm about to declare the winner of this episode, despite it making that much less juice, the Nama J2 Juicer. Now, why am I going to say this? Well, because in the testing, it proved it to me, right? Yes, it made a little bit less juice, but it took 6 minutes versus 15 minutes to make almost the same quantity of juice, right? In addition, it put 2.5 times less pulp in the juice. Some of you guys don't like pulp in your juice, right? If you don't mind pulp, maybe the, the Huram is for you. But it put less pulp in the juice, which means you won't have to get a sieve that's not included when you buy the juicer to strain it out and an extra step for you that's going to take more time. You could just let the pulp go into the juice and then drink it because you're probably not going to notice it because there's only 23 grams in this instance where there's almost two and a half times as much in the Huram. In addition, if you guys want to have a good investment in your health, which, you know, I want to remind you guys, I almost lost my life when I was younger, and the best thing you can do is invest in your health, not invest in your bank account and all the uh, invest money, but invest in your health because without your health, you're not even alive. You don't have, you can't be around to like go to your kid's graduation to, you know, have fun and go hiking or do the thing, watch your sporting games, whatever you guys love to do, right? If you don't have your health, you don't got nothing. So that's why I love the Nama J2 because that does a full 15 year warranty. You'll be covered for the next 15 years should the machine malfunction and is defective due to no fault of your own and they will repair it for you so that you could juice for 15 years. Think about what if your iPhone had a 15 year warranty. Meanwhile, over on the Huram, yes, the machine does cost less money, but if the, this these parts break in three years, right? What do you gotta do? Well. Hopefully, they'll have parts that you could buy to replace it at great expense, which then probably you'll be up to the price of the, of the NEMA anyways. Um, but say they run out of parts and they don't stock parts for this model because Huram's always coming out with new models, right? Then you're going to have to buy a brand new juicer and start over. Yes, the warranty on the motor is 10 years, but the motor warranty on the NEMA is 15 years. In addition, NEMA's got Huram beat from a customer service standpoint, you know, they get back to people super quick, even on Saturday, like I've recently experienced myself, and have some of the top-level customer service in the juicing industry. Let's not forget that this machine also has the smoothie screen or the coarse screen that will put more pulp in your juice if that is desired, as well as they're coming out with that optional sorbet attachment later this year. Let's also couple that with this was a lot less work, 70 ounces versus 30 ounces. I filled this up twice. I had to fill this up four times for the same amount of produce that I juiced. So this was a lot more convenient. It will save you guys more time than the smaller Huram.
The final thing I want to mention is that Hurum is always coming out with the latest and greatest model. So if you like staying and keeping up with the Joneses and, you know, oh, their new model is out, I got to sell this one and get the new one because the new one's better, you know, um, Hurum is always coming out with new models, whereas the Nala company has more of a model like the Tesla Model S, where they, it's been selling since 2012. And slowly but surely, you know, Elon Musk and Tesla have been improving the Model S, and now there's features on the 2023 model that the 2012 model did not have but they have the same model and most of the parts are interchangeable Namo hopes to come out in the future with different accessories for the Nama J2 to build on the functionality and as they see things that have some challenges they'll basically improve the parts in a running design so whenever you buy the Nama you're going to get the latest and greatest model that has all the improvements in it I know they recently shut down their whole production facility line to basically do retooling and now they're making the Nama J2 even better by small minute changes and frankly that is why I love the Nama J2 it is a solid performer could run for easily an hour long whereas this has a 15 minute run cycle this is great for juicing for a family that being said you know if you guys have a small apartment you're juicing for yourself you don't want to drink a lot of juice you don't want to lose weight you don't want to get healthy the, the Hura might be a good option for you because it costs less and it just is enough to make a glass of juice you know and work fairly well at it and actually make a decent quantity at the same time if you guys are doing it for your health and want to lose weight want to get your health back want to juice for your family and turn your family's health around going on a juice fast you want to get the Nama J2 I would not want to use this Hurum H310A on a juice fast you're making far too much juice and it's just going to take you too much time and you will get frustrated because of it all right so anyways, if you guys are interested in buying the Nama J2, I'm going to hook you guys up with a 10% off discount. You want to use a coupon code, throw up right there, full size 10. And that, a full size 10, because this is the full size juicer versus the compact juicer. That'll save you guys 10% off the Nama J2, so you guys can get at the lowest price. And when you guys use that coupon code in the link down below in the description, Nama will show me a small commission so I can continue to make these videos, you know, purchase different juicers to do the testing for you guys and just lay it out on the table so you guys know the truth about the juicers and which one you should buy. So hopefully I've helped you guys out a little bit. You'll help yourself all out by saving 10% and also helping me out at the same time. It'll cost you nothing and you know Nam will share with me a small commission. So I can continue to make these videos for you guys to educate the world about the power of juicing as well as share with you guys the truth you know, about the juices without any marketing fluff. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. That'll help out the YouTube algorithm get this video out to more people. Also, more importantly, share this with other people that are considering buying the Huram so that they can learn about the Huram H310 juicer. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new and upcoming episodes I've coming out every five to seven days. You never know why I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And make sure you click the little bell to get notified as my new videos come out. Finally, be sure to check out past episodes. The past episodes are wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time comparing and contrasting all the different major brand juicers on the market. And I'll put some links down below in the description to some of my favorite videos I've made about the Nama J2. Showing how I bulk juice my roots. How I bulk juice my green juices. You know, how I'm easily able to, you know, juice in the Nama J2 whole fruits without pre-cutting. How the Nama J2 can juice five different fruit recipes, you know, straight fruits, and do an amazing job at it at the same time. Also, let's not forget, you got to watch my video, What They Don't Tell You, 10 Things About the Nama J2, where I share with you guys the secrets about using the Nama J2 so that you guys could get the most out of it, create the most yield, and have the best experience juicing. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors. Thank <laughs> you.